KJ, thank you very much uh, for dropping by. I know you have a lot of preparation before the season begins. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, glad to be on the show. Um, just taking it day by day and embracing it. I know uh, at this point, uh, all the uh, talking heads have made the predictions and the fans are excited. Uh, as, a, as one of the leaders of this football team, what, what's the most important thing for you right now in terms of keeping your, your teammates calm and, and getting ready for the opener, which is a big one? Uh, just being able to be disciplined and uh, also just being consistent and also just uh, coming from a leadership standpoint, just being more vocal in adverse situations and making sure my guys are on the same page and we all on one accord. Coach Pittman has talked a lot about the, the moment when it finally happened for you. Everyone has different views of, of when young players ascend and, be, and become the leaders or one of the leaders. As you reflect back, was it a particular moment? Was it a particular game? Or did you simply evolve into this role? I would say I just evolved into this role. I mean, I don't look at it as a particular game. I just really stood out and showed great leadership and all like that. I feel like it kind of growed on me as the season went on. And now I'm in a position to where I'm confident and comfortable with being more vocal uh, as a leadership standpoint and just also being able to just gain the confidence from my teammates and also they putting their confidence in myself and being able to just come out and just also just show them that I'm a good leader and uh, very vocal as well. KJ, listen, we, we you, you were there when things were were grim. Uh, a lot of uh, younger, uh, a lot of a lot of folks right now, uh, the, the 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 underclassmen don't don't know what you went through, and some of the your your friends along the way went through. Uh, what has Coach Pittman meant uh, in terms of the moment he took over to where this program is now? Uh, just making sure that we're all together. I mean, no, the, not the locker room being divided um, under no circumstance. So just make sure that we're all together. We trust in him. We trust in the whole uh, coaching staff that he put together. And then just also just being loyal. I mean, the main thing is being loyal. Once you get a new coaching staff, they come in. And you, once you gain their trust, you just have to be loyal and just willing to do anything for their coaching staff. And just, I mean, my teammates, we all just, we love the way Coach Pim came in, uh, we, uh, bought into the system that he uh, put together around us and the culture that he brought back with the hard uh, working mentality. So we all just bought in and trust the process. Fans, KJ, have their own mind on – what the team is going to do and commentators like myself we get fixated on okay we know what happened last year here's where we think it will be this year as a player do you and your friends on the team pay attention to the predictions uh, where the media has you and, and if so does it affect you uh we we look at it i mean there are i mean it's social media it's all of social media i mean we, Pretty much we're on social media throughout the day. So, I mean, we check, we seize it, but, I mean, it just also just motivation to just drive us each and every day to just prove everybody wrong. I mean, I mean, that's just the standard here. I mean, we've always been the underdog. So just being able to look at those predictions and then just move along, embrace it, we look at it, use it as motivation to fuel the fire. Does it does it bother you at all when you, when you when you look at the rankings and they're out this week and you you have Alabama of course number one and Georgia number three and, and there's Texas A&M in, in the top ten. Uh, this is a team that you guys beat last year. Uh, you'll play again uh, reasonably early in the season and, and I'm not saying Arkansas is, is low. I mean you're certainly in the top 25 at a good position, but. You're, you're, you're behind a couple of other schools. Does that does that affect you at all? Uh, it doesn't. I mean, we try not. I mean, I try not as a, uh, it's just being me. I try not to look at it too much. I just like to put my head down, keep going to work, and then I just also encourage my teammates not to try to dwell on the uh, rankings and all that. Because I mean, at the end of the day, it it doesn't really matter as long as you put the work in and you're grinding each and every day. With your teammates building chemistry and bonding with each other. The work can just show itself. So just being able to just come in and just keep working and don't pay attention to the rankings at all. To put it mildly, you have a very difficult schedule. Everyone knows where Cincinnati was uh, last year on New Year's Eve. They were in Dallas taking on Alabama for a ticket to the national championship. The second week is South Carolina. That's another team that shocked everybody. Uh, A&M we already talked about, and then there's Alabama and Mississippi State. In, in terms of the the first half of the season, and it, and it doesn't really get that much easier after that, uh, can, you, can you afford to – to, to, to calculate it, or uh, as coaches always talk about, we only know what we're playing in the first game, and that would be against Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, we have a pretty tough schedule uh, looking at it. 
Uh, but, I mean, that's the, that's how we want it. I mean, we want to be able to have a tough skill to just to show, showcase our talent and show what we can do on the uh, national stage, a big stage. So just being able to have a schedule like that, I mean, it really shows uh, that our program, where our program stands, are we on the rise or are we being complacent or, not, or stuff like that. So just being able to look at the schedule and just go uh, take it one game at a time, starting out with uh, September 3rd versus Cincinnati, just being able to come out and then just play Arkansas uh, standard football. KJ, before you go, a couple more questions just about yourself. And I, I know quarterbacks sometimes are the toughest ones on themselves. They're, they, they, they live in the film room. Uh, they're always trying to correct. When you, when you evaluate yourself, and I know that's not the easiest thing to do, but you have to do it uh, when you're dealing with your coaches. What do, what do you see today, and, and how do you feel you have improved uh, from a couple of years ago when, when you were talented but, but quite raw? Uh, Decision-making. I would say decision making, just uh, footwork well, within the pocket. I mean, I know I can get out the pocket and create plays, but also just being able to have great footwork in the pocket and uh, being able to deliver a great ball while in the pocket or being rushed and stuff like that. So just being able to be calm in the pocket and deliver a good ball to my teammates. And also, when I say decision making, just being able to just go through all my reads and not trying to force the ball and fit the ball in tight windows when I don't have to, when I can just check the ball down. So just decision making on where the ball should go and knowing where the ball should go based on what the defense is trying to disguise or what coverage they're getting into. So just decision making and footwork within the pocket. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.